Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at something I feel trips up a lot of developers. So we're going to try to define the boundaries between JavaScript, the programming language, and the environments it runs in. So we often talk about environments in that when we run our JavaScript, it runs in a set environment. And those environments are often defined as either the browser, which is a common place where JavaScript runs, or on the server through Node.js. Now, we're going to take a look at the differences and the similarities between these two, because there are some. And we're going to try to understand what it means and how we have to think about our code when we write it um, and try to just set the boundaries. OK, so without further ado, uh, let's talk briefly about JavaScript, the programming language. So JavaScript is the base. It's, you can think of it like it's your core, it's your body. Like if you have your body, you have your arms and legs, you have your hands, you have your fingers, you have your toes, you have everything that makes your body your body, right? It's built in. That makes you who you are. And that's basically like a programming language. It comes with things built in that makes the programming language a programming language. So it'll have things like variables, uh, control structures like if statements, switch statements, uh, things that make makes it so you can control the flow of the program. And then you'll have other tools that will allow you to do math or evaluate ex expressions. And this comes built into the language. It's all part of the JavaScript specification. And you can use it regardless of which um, environment you're running in. So what do these environments actually give you? If we're talking about the browser, or if we're talking about Node.js? Well, in the browser, we decided a long time ago to put JavaScript in the browser. That means that there is a runtime in the browser that allows us to execute JavaScript. But with that, we've also had a lot of smart people develop a lot of tools that we can use when we are executing JavaScript in the browser. And those tools are referred to as web APIs. And if you go to the MDN or Mozilla Developer Network docs, you can find an overview over all the web APIs that you can use. And it's not always obvious that you are using these tools because some of them are just um, being put into your JavaScript code. And it can be easy to assume that they're part of the JavaScript language when they are not. And there are, in fact, APIs that you utilize through the environment that you're executing your code in. So for example, something like set timeout or fetch is part of the web APIs. So if you look at the set timeout here, you can see that it's listed here as a web API. And this one is actually quite exciting or interesting because if we go ahead and actually write some code utilizing um, this, this uh, functionality, um, we'll see that we can actually execute this both on the client side or in the browser and on the server side. So what's going on there? And just to show you this, if we write a file here, and we'll just create a variable. And then we'll do set timeout. And we'll do a 1000 milliseconds, and then we'll console log the variable. Now I'm going to run this through Node.js, which is the server side environment that we've been talking about. And you can see that we are printing to the console, hello. It's not throwing, it's not saying you can't do this. It's actually using a browser API, isn't it? Well, that's where it gets interesting. So if we go to the Node.js documentation, we can go ahead and see that under timers here, if you go and navigate to this section of the documentation, you can see that there is also a set timeout here. Now, what, what does this mean? Well, it simply means that 
someone thought it was a good idea to take the functionality of the set timeout function that was written for the browser and also implement this in Node.js. So you have the same functionality and the exact same API, which makes it so that you can use both of them or the set timeout functionality in both environments. But that's not the case for all of the APIs. So you have to be careful because this is a set of code that's been written specifically for an environment. And that environment is giving you the functionality that you need so that when your code is actually executing, it's drawing on the environment and using the things that haven't been made available to it. So let's take an example. I'll just try to make it a little bit more visual here. So uh, we'll take the JavaScript uh, box here. We'll duplicate it, we'll put it in here just to indicate that we are running it inside of the browser. Now, if we were to run our index.js file in the browser, and we had a fetch inside of that uh, index.js, so we'll do something like fetch and HTTP maybe google.com, right? Just a simple fetch. Um, this would work fine because fetch is a browser API and it's made available to us through running our JavaScript in the browser. But if we took the same box here and we moved it over here, to our Node.js environment. This is now a problem because Node.js, at least um, not right now, there is uh, being built support for it. I think it might also be merged, but for a lot of versions of Node.js, you don't have fetch natively. You have to install a third party package in order to use fetch. And Let's go ahead and try that out as well. So if we do fetch and we try to do google.com. Uh-oh, now we have a problem. Fetch is not defined. So it's gonna magically work if we do it in the browser because the browser will have fetch and it will make it available on a global object that's just wrapping all of our code and making it so our code can use that functionality. But in the world of Node.js, this functionality doesn't exist yet because it hasn't been built by the people who made Node.js. So there are different worlds with different sets of functionality where there are some overlap between them, but there's not a one-to-one -one parity, which means that you have to be careful when you're using a certain set of APIs that you want to use on the browser side. This means that if you're building for the browser and you're using APIs that are browser specific, you won't be able to use that in the Node.js environment. And those are separate. And this is the key thing to understand that the core of the JavaScript, I mean, the things that come built in, the body of JavaScript, that's what you can use in both environments. But there are different APIs that will have some overlap that you have to figure out what you are building for and be careful. So with that, I think we're not going to draw this out any longer. I just want to make you aware of it and try to just create that boundary uh, between JavaScript, the browser environment, and the Node.js environment. And once you have that, you can dive deeper into either of those and learn more about the APIs that are specific to those environments. And then recognize those when you are writing your code, because that's going to determine uh, which environment you can run in. Okay. And that's it for today. So thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again soon.